Hi, Big Dreamers. It's Eva Cartman, the host of the Dream Big Podcast Show, the place to go to learn, laugh, and grow. I recently ran and got elected to student council at my school. And in this episode, I'm going to share my top secrets on how I got elected. You ready? It's episode 158, Big Dreamers, and it's time to dream big. My name is Eva Cartman. I'm part of a squad of super kids that are here to change the world. We don't believe you need to be adults to have big goals and start working towards your dreams. We believe age is just a number and you're never too young to make a difference. We may be young, but we are not naive. We understand that achieving our big dreams will not be easy. It will take incredible dedication, hard work, and yes, massive action. There will be ups and downs, but we embrace the challenges and relish pushing outside of our comfort zone because this is how we grow. They may not teach us these concepts in our school textbooks, but we are smart enough to know that the tools and tactics to achieve our big dreams are out there. And we are willing to do the work to seek out these skills and master them because we know that our future depends on it. We are the Big Dreamers, and it's time to dream big. Towards the end of the summer, I told my parents that this year I was planning on running for student council. At my school, each 4th and 5th grade class selects two of their classmates to represent the class in student council. I did not run in 4th grade because I chose to do choir, and due to overlapping schedules, it was not possible to do both. But this year, they fortunately fixed that scheduling conflict so it was possible to be in choir and also run for student council. I knew from last year that it was no easy feat to get elected. Typically, at least 10 kids from the class will run, and only two are selected. So statistically, only about 20% of kids who run get elected. So I knew if I was serious about getting elected, I could not just wait till the last minute get in front of the class with no preparation, and ask for my classmates' vote. I remember from last year's election that kids were also making promises that they could not deliver, like putting chocolate milk in the water fountains, arranging a trip to Disneyland, and even an hour of class time to play Fortnite on Fridays. And I knew that I would not feel comfortable making promises that I could not keep. I talked to my parents, and we came up with a strategy that started at the beginning of the school year. So in this episode, I'm going to share those secrets, and I think you'll find them helpful if you plan to run for student council in the future, or if you just want to know how to gain support from your peers. I'm going to break this down into three strategies. What I did before the election, what I did the day of the election, and what I've done since. So first, my campaign did not begin the day of the election. Most of the other kids who were running did not announce they were running until the day of the election. By doing so, they had lost a golden opportunity to create buzz about their campaign before the election. I started telling my classmates from the beginning of the school year that I was planning to run and asked for their ideas and what they would look for in a student council representative. This led me to my first secret, and it is something that I learned from Vanessa Van Edwards, all the way back in episode 43 of the podcast. Vanessa is a lead investigator at the Science of People, a human behavior research lab. She told me that based on scientific studies, the secret to being popular in school is not being a good athlete or having the most stylish clothes or how you look or having a big Instagram following. The most popular kids in school are the ones who like the most people. So my parents shared that if I wanted to have a chance of getting elected, I could not just hang out with the three or four girls in my class that I knew from the previous year. Instead, I needed to go out of my way to be friendly with everyone in the class. And not a fake friendly, but actually genuinely care about my classmates. This may surprise you since I host this podcast, but I am actually still shy at first. So I really had to push myself outside of my comfort zone to be more talkative, to make new friends at the start of the year. I found that one easy way to do that was to ask my classmates what they did during the summer. That was always a great conversation starter, and what kid does not like the summer? So it automatically brought back great memories to share. 
So the first secret, the first key to getting elected, started long before the election. It was going out of my way to be friendly to my classmates and show a genuine interest in getting to know them. The second part of my election strategy was the speech. Because 10 kids were running, our teacher told us that each candidate only had 90 seconds to speak. There's not much you can do with 90 seconds, but I was determined to make the most of it. Now, there are entire books and courses on public speaking, but I did want to share a few quick tips on what I did during my speech. First, the speech was written out, and I rehearsed it numerous times in front of the mirror and also in front of my family before Election Day. I had done it so many times that I felt confident and prepared that I knew the speech inside and out. Second, I used the tip that Simon Sinek shared in episode 91. As I went to the front of the class, I told myself that I was excited, not nervous. Because, as Simon explained, that feelings you get from nervousness and excitement are very similar. But if you can convince yourself that you are excited, then what you put out is way more positive energy than if you tell yourself you're nervous. So when I was speaking for those 90 seconds, I was enthusiastic and positive and smiling. And finally, the last tip was that I made the speech all about my classmates, not me. I didn't waste any of the 90 seconds talking about the podcast or the famous people I've talked to or anything like that. The whole theme of the speech was that I really cared about getting the opinion and concerns of my classmates to student council. Being a passionate representative for our class and making our school a better place. After it was announced that I was one of the two kids who had been selected, a number of my classmates came up to me and said that they voted for me because it was clear that I actually cared about bringing real change to the school and representing our class interests. Finally, I mentioned that I would share my post-election strategy. At this point, it has only been a few weeks since the election, so I have not had much of an opportunity to get started. But I did want to share that I take my classmates' trust in me very seriously and plan to follow through on my promises. One idea that I gave in my speech was to create an idea box in class where classmates can put their ideas for how to improve the school, which I would then bring up in student council. I've already set that box up, and look forward to receiving feedback from my classmates. Because I'm in the fifth grade, there will not be a re-election next year since I'll be going to a new school. However, I'm sure a lot of my classmates will be going to the same middle school, and I want to make sure that my reputation as a student council representative is that I did follow through on my promises and did my best to represent my class. It's not just about getting elected, but it's also about what you do with that responsibility that truly matters. I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, we have show notes at dreamitpodcast.com slash 158, where you will find links to the Vanessa Van Edwards and Simon Sinek episodes I referenced. Those are great listens if you had not heard those interviews. If you are enjoying the podcast, please take a moment to leave us a review on iTunes at dreamitpodcast.com slash iTunes. We do read your reviews and it helps us get in front of more big dreamers, which is my mission. If you would like to be part of the beta of the Dream Big Academy and get my free Confidence Secrets course, you can do that at dreamitpodcast.com slash beta. In this free Confidence Secrets course, you'll get over one hour of me teaching you about how to develop your superpower of self-belief. If you are a younger big dreamer listening to this, please ask your parents to help you get it. Again, it's completely free for a limited time, so please take advantage and get it while you still can at dreamitpodcast.com slash beta. That's all the announcements for today. As always, thank you so much for tuning into the Dream Big Podcast. This is Eva Cartman reminding you that you have unlimited potential. Your dreams are not optional. You need to make them essential. So take massive action to turn those big dreams into reality. Live with passion the way life was meant to be. I'll see you next episode. Bye.